Hi everybody, Mark here. How are you doing out there? I uh, hope you're doing well. This is just a, like a little vloggy thingy pickup video, haul video that I, that I do every now and then when I get the, enough stuff to show you guys. Um, so I think vloggy, vloggy what's happened in my life recently. Not a lot really. Sadly, we've, um, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the, the videos that I put up with uh, the pets we've had here recently um sadly two days ago one of our female rats holly died um she she's getting on in years she was coming up to three years old which is quite old for rats and um yeah i won't go into the details or anything like that, but she's unfortunately passed away uh we still have her sister Ivy, which we, who we're, we're looking after, and we're we're keeping an eye on, and you know we're we're keeping her entertained and that, so she doesn't get lonely. And we've also still got Kirby the ferret, <coughs> so yeah, we we still have our our furry friends with us. But just in case anybody out there knows, we've got we've got rats and that. I thought I'd let you guys know. Um, so yeah, it is sad when these things happen. These these um these little furry critters that come into our lives doesn't matter whether it's a, a hamster a mouse a cat a dog a ferret a rat a rabbit anything like that if, when they come into our lives and we uh, we we give them a piece of our hearts they you know inadvertently take them with them take that with them when they uh, when they go unfortunately but c'est vie, such is life um on a more upbeat note I'll show you what I've actually picked up from uh, from uh, the last couple of weeks now, what I've been given. Um, first of all, you know, Pez dispensers. Everybody knows Pez dispensers. I've got a couple around here somewhere. I've got a, um, a Yoda Pez dispenser, which come out, I think it was around about the first... It was either around about when Fan Phantom? Phantom Menace come out, or... Uh, Attack of the Clones come out. I can't remember which one it was, but there, there was a Yoda pest dispenser that I got, and I didn't eat the pest sweets, and then the pest sweets went off, so I had to get rid of the packaging. And I've still got the. Did I get rid of the packaging, or did I keep the packaging? I think I, kept, I can't remember. I got a Yoda pest dispenser somewhere in my vault, uh, and I was just middling around town, having looked in the shop to see what was there, and I, I found a Tasmanian Devil pest dispenser. Because I like my Looney Tunes, I like my Warner Brother cartoons and that. I think they are some of the best cartoons that are out there. <clears throat> Especially the sort of like original sort of like from the 40s and 50s. Uh, yeah, the Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny and... <laughs> Tasmanian Devil one. Um, yeah, I, I, I used to love watching the, um, the Tasmania cartoon, the one that come around about the same time as the Animaniacs and the Looney Tune adventures. So Tasmanian Devil Pest Dispenser. Just for all those out there who are interested in pest pest dispensers. I don't think this is anything in particular, anything special or anything. I don't think this it's just a pest dispenser. So yeah. <clears throat> um oh, if you like right, uh next up we have the magazines that I get usually from the little village shop in the village that I used to live in, about three miles away. Uh, first off, 2000 AD, 1843. Yep, still the Galaxy's gal 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 still the galaxy's greatest comic. And do you know what? I saw this cover, and I did not realise that. It has been 30 years since the very first Slain story come out in 2000 AD. 30 years. That is crazy. 1983, yeah. 1983. Flipping egg. Um, but yeah, this, this uh, 2000 AD, 1844, comes with two covers. Uh, I've only got cover one at the moment. I think cover two is a, a wraparound cover. But that's, and it's still going, still going strong, slain, uh, what's it called now? <clears throat> oh, it's just called slain, it's just, it used to be slain the barbarian, um, but, uh, yeah, the artwork's changed a lot, I mean, this is more, 
There you go. I'll show you that. The artwork for Slayers much more photo. There's, there's much more along the lines of the photorealistic. Um, by the looks of it, they take pictures of people and then they just draw over them. <coughs> so, but yeah, really cool. Quite dark though. Quite a dark, a dark kind of art. Oh, they yeah, here. Yeah. But what really, really piqued my interest with this story is that uh, you actually have. And let's have a look, see if they give them. No, he's actually written there. I can't remember who the original artist was on Slain off the top of my head, but it actually goes back to the original black and white artwork of Slain, right back at the beginning, where Slain was going to be put into the Wicker Man as a sacrifice to the, the Horn God. But yeah, brilliant. Looking forward to that series. And of course, you've also got Judge Dredd in there, and uh, Defoe, Age of Wolf 3, and the Ten Seconders, which are all great stories as well. Um, you remember the last pickup video? So it's getting comfortable. The last pickup video that I I did, and I said to you, I said to you that that was the most but ugliest Batmobile I'd ever seen until I saw the back cover. Well, I just want to say that no, that's not the most but ugliest. That's the second most but ugliest Batmobile I think I've ever seen. This is the most. But ugliest Batmobile I've ever seen. The Batmobile from Batman and Robin movie. It's heinous. <laughs> Look at it. It just no. It wrong on every level. It. I mean, it comes from a movie that was banned from Guantanamo Bay for goodness sake. Um, <clears throat> oh my life! Look at it. <clears throat> That's heinous. Jiminy Christmas. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the um, I'll show you the the, the, the model that comes with it. <coughs> now, these models really nice, really well crafted, really well designed models. I like all. Uh, I like the way they're made and everything. But this is still a butt ugly Batmobile. Can you see that? Trying to do it without getting glare on the. Oh yeah, so yeah, but um, put it back. Luckily enough, they're redeeming themselves because they are having in the next issue, which is issue seventeen. They've got. <laughs> I think this is cool. They've got the Joker mobile from Batman number thirty-seven. Yeah, I know it looks like some kind of weird sort of like Anderson shelter on wheels. And if anybody out there doesn't know what an Anderson shelter, either ask your grandparents, ask your parents, or Google it. Yeah, but yeah, it looks like an Anderson shelter on wheels. I'm just showing my age there. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. But I'm still really happy that they're they're making that out. Um, what was it? Oh, presents, presents, yes, presents. Uh, <clears throat> My girlfriend come home yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday from work. And she goes, Oh, I've got something for you. I went, ha ha. <laughs> what is it? She goes, Close your eyes and open your hands. I was like, ah, Cool. So I closed my eyes, opened my hands, couldn't see a thing. Um, but then she put this in my hands. I was brilliant. She certainly knows how to get to my heart. Two ways to get to my heart comics and food. <laughs> and uh, this is definitely it. <laughs> How cool is that? And it's even got the real Superman on it as well. It's got the real Superman on it. But how cool is that? That's brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can. No, this is the weird thing. I I always thought that DC Comics, unless this was issued before New Fifty Two, but then it's got that but ugly DC it's got that DC logo on it the ugly one that nobody likes yeah um, but they've got 
that Superman. This is a confusing thing that I'm not quite sure anybody else is worried about. Or worried, but confused or... Um, yeah, they're trying to push the look of the new 52 Superman, regardless of how terrible it looks. Um, in my opinion, anyway. Other people might like it. That's up to them. But in my opinion, it looks horrible. But So they're trying to push the, the new look for the new 52 Superman, yeah. This is from DC Comics. You can tell it's from, from when the new, new 52 was coming out because it's got that logo on there. But yeah, they're still using the old pre-52 Superman, which I'm not complaining about because this looks a hell of a lot better than the new 52 Superman does. But yeah, anyway, rant over. I'm going to be eating something tonight. I've got, just got to try and figure out how to open this box without damaging it. I'll figure out, well, even if I've got to stick a straw in it and just suck the food out. I don't know. I'll figure out. I'll figure out how to do it. But yeah, that was really cool. I love that. Brilliant. Um, a couple more pickups I've done. You know I like Doctor Who. And uh, it's the 50th anniversary. Blah, 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 blah. If you don't know that, then... It's the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. There, you know it now. Um, <laughs> and and I've picked up some of these books here, which are quite quite pivotal, actually, quite pivotal books. And I picked these up mainly because they do have a certain thing to do with the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Uh, and and also for this this year as well, and it's it's a set of Doctor Who books from the BBC, which I believe are reprints of old Target novels that were published in the seventies and eighties, and I think they published a few in the nineties as well. And they've actually they've actually done every single episode of the what is now known as classic series of Doctor Who, and the three titles I picked up, because there was loads of them, I could have picked up all of them if I had money through it, but the three titles I picked up was Doctor Who and the Tenth Planet, which is the William Hartnell episode, the the last Doctor Who story that starred William Hartnell as the Doctor. <clears throat> it was also the first appearance of the Cybermen. It was also the first appearance of a regeneration scene. And it was also the first appearance. Was it the first appearance? No, it wasn't the first appearance of Patrick Trout and his Doctor Who because you didn't actually. Was the first appearance? Yes, it was the first appearance of Patrick Trout and his Doctor Who as well. Yeah, you actually saw him transform into Patrick Trout in this on the last, very last episode. And these are brilliant. I th these are, these are really good. What you got to remember is many many moons ago when your parents. When your grandparents used to go to school on dinosaurs and people used to fly around in air balloons and that and they only used to use chalk with slate yeah right there was no such thing as dvd players no such things as blu-ray no no internet no not even a vcr player not, not a video record or betamax or anything like that you might have been lucky if your family had a tv set when when doctor who first came out um that's how long ago it was kiddies uh, so you never really got a chance to re-watch episodes of Doctor Who when you watched an episode of Doctor Who that was it if you missed an episode of Doctor Who you didn't see it because BBC didn't even didn't even do reruns or, or, or show re-show programs oh, you know, back in those days they just showed an episode once and that was it if you missed it if you were out for some reason and you missed that episode of doctor who you missed it you didn't see it ever until obviously vcr and dvd come out and then you know obviously then you managed to get you get got to saw it unless it was one of the 106 episodes of doctor who that was completely missing and to know more about that look at my last pickup video i just noticed something no in the background just there. Look. Ooh, I've got reflection. <laughs> reflection just there. On my um on my screen, on my window. Yeah. If you're wondering where the curtains are, it's because I'm washing them. Because I'm like that. Um it's summer, so you've got to wash your curtains. 
why not? Anyway, uh, <laughs> sorry, I completely lost track of, track of what I was doing on there. Um, yeah, so these target books were the only way you could relive and, and enjoy the old episodes of Doctor Who. And when it came to the missing episodes, these were the only way you could actually enjoy the missing episodes again. And I think there's one episode of this that's still missing. I think it's the last episode of this that's still missing. So, which is unfortunate, really, because the only part of the last episode of the Tenth Planet that's still around is the regeneration from William Hartnell to Patrick Troughton. And the only reason why that's still around is because every time there's a regeneration, every time an actor changes from one doctor, the, the, the character changes from one doctor to another, and there's a generation, regeneration, and there's a news report on the fact that the actor's leaving and somebody else is going to take their place. They always show the regeneration, the very first ever regeneration from the last episode of The Tenth Planet from William Hartnell to Patrick Stroughton. That's the only reason why it's a, that, that clip of that episode survived everything. So, so yeah, so Tenth Planet. Um, one of my personal favourite Doctor Who episodes ever from the classic series at least uh, mainly because it had the very first three doctors all in one show even though sadly William Hartnell was very ill at the time of recording this and he had to have his lines in front of him so he could read him read them that's how that's how ill he was um, but this this is a great a great episode and it's the first time any of the doctors met up with each other and it is the three doctors and as well as that it's also the first appearance of omega the mad time lord that uh, went into a black hole though created a black hole by collapsing a star a giant a giant star and was trapped inside an antimatter universe and he wanted to get get out and the only way he thought he was going to get out was by destroying this universe and turning this universe into an antimatter universe so yeah this is a brilliant brilliant uh, brilliant story from doctor who's past if you haven't seen the three doctors see if you can get hold of a copy of it it should be out on dvd um anywhere really in, in america or canada or australia yeah anything if you are thinking of starting to watch doctor who this probably might be a bit complicated for you, but a, a bit confusing for you, seeing all three Doctors at the same time. But it's still a pretty nice story to watch, if you even if you've never seen any Doctor Who at all. So, yeah, that's a really good... And finally, for this one, we have Tom Baker story. And now, not every Doctor Who episode had exactly the same title oh, itty nose again what is wrong with my nose maybe i need to pluck the hairs out of it i don't know i'll do that later on not every doctor who story had exactly the same title all the way through its life uh i can't think of any off the top of my head at the moment apart from this one i know there's quite a few of them out there i think i think spearhead from space which was the first um, first John Pertwee Doctor Who story, had a different title to um, the actual title that was that was on the TV show. Uh, I'm trying to think what other ones there were, but it's off the top of my head. I can't think of it at the moment. But anyway, you all when they done the Target books, some of them they named after the original title that was on the. The, the 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 script and the show running notes show running notes for that for that episode and that story <coughs> this is one of them originally well I'll, I'll show you i'll show you what the actual the story of this book is it's doctor who and the loch ness monster which <coughs> i'm sure i'm talking about again i don't remember an episode called doctor who and a, a story called doctor who and the loch ness monster that's because on the tv show it was Doctor Who, Terror of the Zygons. 
Yeah, see? And this was this is the novel novelization of the very first appearance and only appearance so far of the Zygons. Which is strange because a lot of Doctor Who fans slay, uh, state that the Zygons are one of their favourite Doctor Who enemies, other than the Cybermen and the Daleks. The Zygons are one of the ones that they actually say, oh yeah, I'd love to see the Zygons again. So there you go. You never know though. They might appear at some point, some when and some time, somehow. Who knows? So there you go. The Doctor Who and the Loch Ness Monster. Or... As it's known, mainly Doctor Who and the Terror of the Zygons. So, yeah. so there you go, that's the Doctor Who bit out of the way. Um, and if you remember when I showed you my last haul video, I showed you a, a friend of mine uh, was having a clear out and he gave me a load of annuals, a load of British, British annuals of comic books and, and such. And this one is no different. <laughs> He's done it again. And I'm eternally grateful for him. Uh, this is the little bundle of joy that he's given me. I shall show him to you. This this is a book by Alan Frank called Sci-Fi Now. There's 10 exciting years of science fiction from 2001 to Star Wars and the close encounters of the third kind. I sound like Crichton there, didn't I, for a second? Oh, wait a no, sir. Mr. Lister, sir. <sighs> gracious no anyway but yeah so this is this is a, a book on sci-fi movies uh as it said from 2001 a space odyssey star wars close encounters of the third kind so look what else is there and it, it's just a a, a a really interesting book dealing with the whole 10 years i think it's from 1969 there I'm going to embarrass myself here, 1969, which was when 2001 A Space Odyssey came out, 1968, 1969, and this is published in 1978, so 1968 might be when Close Encounters, uh, when um, 2001 A Space Odyssey came out, and this is where I'm going to hear loads of people going, no, it didn't come out then, it come out. We're fine, if you know when 2001 A Space Odyssey come out, I'm wrong. I, I think it's about 68, 69 that come out. Put it comment section down below. I'll look at it later. <laughs> but yes, brilliant. There's loads of... What the hell? Oh, I'm going to have to see if I can find a copy of that. Um, a movie called The Red Sitting Room. Is that who I think it is? Is that who I think it is? I think that's um, an actor, comedian who I can't remember, but I remember he was on. I remember how he died. He died on a horse. He was doing a stunt for a movie, and he was riding on a horse, and he fell off. And he, yeah, um, and his son was picked for being one of the people to be the next doctor the 12th doctor and uh, i can't remember his name um we got oh well, look blade runner not blade runner you twonk logan's run i haven't been drinking today that's what it is logan's run brilliant all pictures fantastic so yeah sci-fi now so there's me reading the book whilst I'm trying to do a video um, uh, now on to the annuals and these are all well, apart from one these are all sci-fi annuals uh, you have got the Battlestar Galactica annual yeah, which is really cool. Now, ah, now somebody asked the question, and I apologise. I apologise now because I can't remember who it was who asked the question. But somebody asked the question last time 
I was talking about annuals, what I meant when I said that the annual had been clipped. Right. Now this annual has been clipped. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can find one that hasn't been clipped. That one hasn't been clipped, but it's not really a good down there. That one hasn't been clipped, but that's not really a good. Hang on a second. That's right, talk amongst yourselves. No, that one's been clipped. No, that one's been clipped. Ah, they can't all be clipped. Hang on. I know there's one of these annuals that weren't clipped. Right. These annuals. Yeah. They had on the inside page. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Right. I've got an unclipped one. Right. These annuals, British annuals, inside the page, inside the, first, the, the cover, and on the very first page, they had that, which was the price attached to the cover. Yep. Yes, that's how it's printed. There's nothing strange there. It's just all, you know, and it's the price of the annual. All right. Now, what used to happen, so mummy and daddy didn't, not, so mummy and daddy, um, no, so, so, so little Johnny didn't know how much mummy and daddy had been spending on him at Christmas. That bit there, with the price, used to be, cut off by the parents or clipped so you wouldn't have that there you would just have that like that i know i can hear you all screaming no why did they do that for but that's that's how <coughs> that's how they were designed so that the parents could the parents, when they bought them, they could go, oh, that's 50p, that's a pound. Okay, I buy that for my son or daughter, but I don't want them to know how much it costs. Snip. <coughs> now they'll think that Santa Claus bought it for them. <coughs> um, FYI, I never actually believed in Santa Claus. Uh, I think I was about four years old when I broke it to my parents that, Mum, Dad, I really don't believe in Santa Claus. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's what clipped means. Um, if I say it's been clipped, it means that it has been, it has had the price tag clipped out or cut out of it, which doesn't deter, deteriorate the, the actual book much. Um, you know, if a, I, I suppose you... I hate to use the word real collector. But if if you get somebody who is not really the word one can use, extremely sensitive about the quality of their books, comics, and that, you would probably find out that they wouldn't buy a book like that. It would have to have the actual price still on it, which is quite rare with annuals this old from the 1970s i mean this is 1970 something oh it's printed in holland huh, that's funny uh this is copyright 1978 so i would say that this was printed in 1978 1979 1980 sort of that era that area of that sort of within that sort of three year area this would have been probably printed so there you go so that's what i mean when i say an annual has been clipped okay but other than the fact that it's clipped, nothing else is wrong with it. There's no crayons or felt tip pens or pencils or biro marks in it. This is a really nice copy, copy of Battlestar Galactica annual. So there you go, there's that. And we also have, <laughs> you can tell this is in the 80s. We also have Buck Rogers in the 25th century annual 1981 look at that cover a great cover for buck rogers look at it fantastic and this one hasn't been clipped mainly because you can see there's no price on there nothing's been printed on there so 
also obviously didn't cut it off so it's not being clipped so but yeah now now anybody out there who knows their comics better than me i'm going to show you a page from this story and i was just wondering if anybody out there could tell me what comic company originally printed this story now to me it looks like there's that's there's actually two stories in here i'm going to show you the first one the, f the, the second one looks like it was done by i don't think dc comics ever done a done a done a buck rogers the first one looks like it possibly could have been printed by someone like dell or gold key or or um uh, Charlton Comics, Carlton Comics, however you pronounce it. So, and there's no actual information here on who the original copyright owner was. So, I'm going to show you the picture, the, a few pages of this. There you go. Now, this looks like it's been heavily influenced by the original Buck Rogers. Uh, episodic movies that they used to have in the 30s and 40s and 50s. You know, the ones they had the Batman one and the um, Flash Gordon one with Buster Crab in it. So yeah, if anybody knows what comic company or what year this was printed, to me it looks like it could be <clears throat> something like a Gold Key or a Dale comic. And... It was printed round about it's like fifty sixties, but like I said I, I don't know. I'm I'm completely oblivious to this sort of sort of thing. But it would be interesting for me to to find out. And I'm just wondering in this there in this story they um, the planet that they're on has been invaded by these little green dudes. Uh, who have got really big eyes and who hypnotise people to do their bidding. And if you look at this, does that look like the Hypnotoad? <laughs> All hell the Hypnotoad. <laughs> they've been hypnotised. You can tell they've been hypnotised because there's strange beams coming out of their eyes. And even though, for some reason, it's making a zap sort of sound. Zap! Because that's what happens when you hypnotise people. Strange beams come out of your eyes and zap! Brilliant stuff. Love it. So, yeah, if anybody out there knows what, what year or what company printed Buck Rogers comic books. Uh, like I said, it looks like something like from the... Dow Gold Key, probably not Gold Key. So I think Gold Key. Dow was Gold Key, and then Gold Key Chain. I can't remember what that. I have to Google it. Uh, and I'm sure somebody out there is going to go, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. But yeah, so there you go. And I'm going to save that one because that this this one here is the prize to me. I tell you, this is also really interesting to me. Uh, and you'll probably know because you know I like horror movies and the like. And this this is brilliant because I think this has got something to do with Hammer Horror, the Hammer the 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 um, movie company Hammer, which was out in the like sixties and done all the Dracula movies with Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee in them. And this looks like these are actually comic book adaptations of the Hammer movies. I'll show you what it is. It's it's Dracula's Spine Chillers Annual. And this has got no year on it. So I'm going to have to see if I can... This is from... Roman numerals. Woohoo! Roman numerals. This is from MCML XXXXII, which, if my memory numerals are correct, is 1982. Yes, MCML XXXII. 
Yes, 1982. <coughs> it's just come out in 1982. <coughs> or at least it's copyrighted 1982 anyway. And you've got things, you've, you've, like with most of these annuals, you've got, not that you can see that because it's all whited out, but you've got a written story, which has just got little pictures to illustrate the actual main story. And there's another, another one there. Uh, this one's called The Night Creatures. Uh, the next one is The Frightening Tale of James McGregory. Which has got werewolves in it, and then you got uh, you got a little piece here on vampire lore. Now this is the really interesting thing with me. For me, this looks like it is a adaptation of the Hammer horror movie Dracula with Peter Cushion as Van Helsing and Christopher Lee as Dracula, Count Dracula. Hey, look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous writing. Now you can tell this has got something to do, or I'm imagining has, has at least something to do with the Hammer Horror Dracula, because if you look at the pictures of Count Dracula, it looks like a very young Christopher Lee. And that was the worst impersonation of Christopher Lee I think anybody's ever done. Uh, yeah, and this goes. This this whole story goes through the whole annual. It's a three parter, and it does follow Bram Stoker's Dracula story quite close. Um, but still, I mean, look, there's, there's that's Peter Cushion. But then, after you have the three part story of the Dracula movie. Or the story, the tale of Dracula, and some more um, written stories. You have this, which is great. A com and I don't know if anybody else has ever seen this. I would be, I would love to hear of anybody out there who's a, a horror fan and a comic book collector who has ever seen this. I've found a comic book adaptation of the Hammer horror film movie. Twins of Evil. How cool is that? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going, huh? But this is this is one of those one of those hammer movies that are just the epitome of hammer horror of the sixties and early seventies, which is buxom young women who are vampires going around biting people and sucking their blood and and excessive amounts of undertoes of lesbianism and homoeroticism and that that nobody ever talked about. But you knew it was in there. <laughs> yeah, these are just absolutely gorgeously, beautifully drawn black and white stories. And I'm trying to think who it was that produced these comic book adaptations of these Hammer Horror movie, Hammer movies. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody producing comic book adaptations of horror movies. I might have forgotten about it, I don't know. But it's brilliant. I'm so glad that I was given this. It is just it's just definitely for my horror my horror collection and my comic book collection, this is definitely a prized piece for me. Um yeah, definitely something I'm gonna to have to look up on the internet. Thank you, internet. Uh I'm gonna to have to look up on the internet and see if I can find out more about those stories and see if there's any more out there. Now, before I get to quickly go through these, because we're coming up to nearly an hour on this now, um, about 40 minutes now, this is the one that I'm really happy to get. And I was so chuffed when I saw it, I was like, oh, cool. And I'm a big horror, horror movie fan, but I'm also a big sci fi movie fan as well. I like my sci-fi movies. I'm not one of these people that... And I like my sci-fi in general in any case. I'm not one of these people who will say, oh, I'm a Trekkie, I only like Star Trek, or I'm a, I only watch Doctor Who, or I only watch Star Wars. I'm one of these people who... I could quite happily watch a Star Wars episode episode of Star Trek 
or a Star Trek movie, I could quite happily sit down and watch a whole day's worth of Doctor Who episodes, and I could quite happily sit down and watch all the Star Wars movies in, go, in one go. And this is one of those things that I was really happy to get hold of. It is the Star Wars annual, number one. It's brilliant. <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 where is it? Nine, this is 1978. 1978. And this reprints, and I know this one, this reprints the Marvel Comics adaptation of Star Wars A New Hope. There you go. And you can tell it's Marvel, even even to the uninitiated, you can tell it's Marvel due to the fact that when you see the picture, right at the top, on the top left hand corner, you see Stan, you can't probably see it there because it's all white out, Stan Lee Presents, which is on nearly, I don't know if it's on, is it on Marvel Comics now? I don't know, I've not really noticed that much actually, but it's, it was on in, in the 70s and 80s and, and most of the 90s. Stanley Presents was on every single splash page, first page of a Marvel comic. <coughs> this is brilliant. I'll have to have a proper read of this to see if there's any extra bits in here that aren't that isn't in the movie. But I don't think I don't think it was. I think the whole Marvel adaptation of this was just a, a straightforward adaptation. There might actually be bits missing out of it. Brilliant. So yeah, Star Wars annual. Love it. God, I love it. Um, right, on to the comics. I'll do this quickly because I don't want everybody to be hanging around and waiting for me to show them all my comics. These are all comics that I've I've uh, had sent to me. These are all new comics as well that I've had sent to me in the last week or so. <coughs> and <coughs> we'll start off with this one because it's oversized. It's not covered. It's not bagged and bagged yet. It's the part four of Ted McKeever's Miniature Jesus, which is just so surreal, but so good. I love Ted McKeever's work. He's not for everybody's taste, but it's his, his work is just so, so, so out there, but so good, as far as I'm concerned. And you have FF number 10, great series. <clears throat> uh, looking forward to reading this one. I actually I haven't actually read this one yet. <clears throat> it's Captain Midnight number one. I've got issue zero of this, <clears throat> but looking forward to reading that one. Uh, Daredevil twenty nine, great series, brilliant series. Uh, this is the Wake issue three. Loving loving this series, loving this mini series. Can't wait. It's one of those ones. I've said before, I can't wait for it to end because I want to know what happens in the end and how they wrap it all up. But also, I can't wait to see. I, I don't want this to finish. Sorry, I, mean, I just don't want this to end because I've been loving this this whole um, whole mini series. Of this this is issue seven of Doctor Who: Prisoners of Time with uh, the Sylvester McCoy seventh Doctor on there, on the front there. <coughs> I'm also looking forward to number eight of this because it's got the Paul McGann Doctor in it so it'll be interesting to see what he's like in this and you have got XX Men number three <laughs> um, that, that was a little joke there for all you geneticists out there XX Men that was a little joke for you geneticists out there XX Men <coughs> um Issue 5 of Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't got the I haven't got any of the um, the variant covers of this yet. I'm looking possibly to get the Scotty Young one 
if I get a chance to get it. And the oh, there's a really nice oh, that's a good, there's a really nice painted cover of this that I'm looking for. It's the um, Adi Granoff cover. His stuff's absolutely gorgeous in any case. But I'm looking to see if I can pick that one up at some point. <clears throat> really happy I've got this. Issue 5 of Five Ghosts. The Haunting of um, Fabian Grey. This is just a brilliant series. And I'm so glad this has gone to a full series now. I think this is the last issue of this story arc. In October, there's a one-shot. And I think it's either starting from December or January next year. It carries on from issue 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 as an ongoing. Brilliant. If you haven't picked this up, you're seriously missing out on some really good stories there. And last four, we have got Superior Spider-Man number 15. A really good series that I was completely taken back by. I, I didn't realise it was going to be that, the first issue was going to be that good. And um, I can't wait to read this issue. It's Superior Foes of Spider-Man number two. Really like this uh, issue, this comic so far. <coughs> Uh, a new one from J.M. Straczynski and Tom Mandrake. And I love Mandrake's artwork. I have loved Mandrake's artwork since I first saw it in the Spectre comic from DC Comics. I've always liked his artwork. It's, it's that sort of gritty, um, sort of dark artwork, but it's so crisp as well his artwork really like it this is cover b of issue one of sidekick and i like i like that one and finally people yes you can you can all go home in a minute to your loved ones um deadpool kills deadpool number two all i've got to say in this is panda pool Love this. Absolutely brilliant series. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to show you uh, for this video. Thank you all for watching. I've got to say again, thank you everybody for subscribing. I've got over 100, uh, uh, over, 100 over 400 subscribers now on my channel. Absolutely brilliant. Every single person who has subscribed to my channel, I've just got to say thank you so much. Uh, just a quick reminder. <clears throat> of a little sort of competition. There's no real prize apart from the fact that I'm going to do a video for you guys. Uh, all you've got to do is be subscribed to my channel and let me know what you want to, what kind of video you want to, me to do for you to show you something or whatever. Some people have already put messages on my 400 subscriber video that I did a couple of, couple of days ago. So I will be doing videos for them. If you've got any ideas of, of whatever video you want me to see me do keep it clean keep it possible you know i'm not gonna be sort of like bringing in my my earth s doppelganger from you know from a multi from the multiverse to show you what he looks like um uh although it's not impossible but yeah so if you have anything you want any video you want me to do and like i said Keep it sane-ish. Keep it possible. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to do something stupid like set fire to myself or anything like that. Again, uh, but yeah. So if you have any ideas, you want to see something, you want to see my DVD collection, you want to see my whatever, put it down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you want to see me do a video of. Uh, if you have any any information or you have any extra information, or you know something that I don't about these the stuff that I've shown you today, uh, please feel free to put in the comment section down below, because I am no way an oracle for comic books. I know a little bit. I know some stuff, and some stuff that I don't know I make up. 
So, <laughs> but but please, you know, please, I I am not immune to going onto Google and Wikipedia just to check my facts to make sure that what I'm what I'm telling you is correct as far as Google and Wikipedia have told me. Yeah, um, I know a bit, but I don't know everything. So if you have any information, any extra information about what I've shown you, the Buck Rogers comet uh, annual. If you know what the, that comet comes from, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, same with the the Dracula uh, suspense annual. Those those Hammer horror comics. Love to hear about those. And yeah, that's thank you for watching. I'm spitting. I'm spitting in my last video as well. I can't promise. I've got an excess amount of phlegm in my mouth for some reason. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was enjoyable to somebody out there, at least. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already and you want to do so, or even if you don't want to, just please subscribe. Just down here. <coughs> Comment section down below. I've already said that, said that a bit. Thumbs up. Great. Thumbs down. Eh, whatever. If you want. But if you thumbs it down, say why you thumbs it down. Okay? Don't be some... Who thinks that? Oh, I'm gonna thumbs it down because I think you <laughs> thumbs it down. You're not making yourself any friends, and quite frankly, just showing that you're quite a petty person. Um, so yeah. So anyway, but if you want to thumbs it down, fair enough. But if you do thumbs it down, say why you thumbs it down. It's the only way I'm gonna learn to make my videos more interesting and better for you guys out there to watch. Okay. So thank you for watching. Take care. I'm just gonna take the ferret for a quick run around because he's banging on his case door yes you yeah and uh love the comics that you read and i'll uh, i'll see you all later on and uh, hopefully very soon ta-ta for now